Uh, so if you remember, we've just got to the point where this bird's come down, it's landed, and uh, it, but he says, is that a tame bird? And he says, no, not at all. Birds are our friends. We use them all the time for going places. That lady is taking her children to see their grandmother. He lives in another forest about 50 miles away. He'll be there in less than an hour. Can you talk to them? Little Billy asked. To the birds, I mean. Of course we can talk to them, Don Minnie said. We can summon them anytime we want if we have to go somewhere. How else would we get our supplies of food up here? The red hot grunch makes it impossible for us to walk anywhere in the wood. Do the birds like doing this for you? Little Billy asked. They'll do anything for us, Don Minnie said. They love us and we love them. We store food for them inside the trees so they don't starve when the icy cold winter comes along. Suddenly, all sorts of birds were alighting on the branches of the tree around where little Billy was sitting, and the minpins were climbing onto their backs in droves. Most of the minpins had small sacks slung over their shoulders. At this time of day, they go off to collect food, Don Minnie said. All the grown-ups have to help in getting food for the community. The population of each tree looks after itself. Our trees are like your cities and towns, and the small trees are like your villages. It was an astonishing sight. Every kind of wonderful bird was flying in and perching on the branches of the great tree. And as soon as one landed, a minpin would climb onto its back and off they would go. There were blackbirds and thrushes and skylarks and ravens and starlings and jays and magpies and many kinds of small finches. It was all very fast and well organized. Each bird seemed to know exactly which minpin it was collecting and each minpin knew exactly which bird he or she had ordered for the morning. The birds are our cars, Don Minnie said to little Billy. They are much nicer and they never crash. Soon all the grown up minpins, excepting Don Minnie, had flown away on birds and only the tiny children were left. Then the robins came in and the children began climbing onto their backs and going for short flights. Don Minnie said to little Billy, the children all practice learning to fly on robins. Robins are sensible and careful birds and they love the little ones. Little Billy simply stood there staring. He could hardly believe what he was seeing. While the children were practicing on the robins, little Billy said to Don Minnie, is there no way in the world to get rid of that disgusting red hot smoke belching gruncher down below? The only time a gruncher dies, Don Minnie said, is if he falls into deep water. The water puts out the fire inside him and then he's dead. The fire to a gruncher is like your heart is to you. Stop your heart and you die at once. Put out the fire and the gruncher dies in five seconds. That's the only way to kill a gruncher. Now hang on a minute, little Billy said. Is there by any chance a, a pond or something around here? Well, there's a big lake on the far side of the forest, Don Minnie said. But who's going to entice the gruncher into that? Not us, and certainly not you. He'd be on you before you got within 10 yards of him. But you did say the gruncher can't see in front of him because of all the clouds of smoke he blows, little Billy said. Quite true, Don Minnie said, but how is that going to help us? I don't think the gruncher is ever going to fall into the lake. He never goes out of the forest. I think I know how to make him fall in, little Billy said. What I want, little Billy went on, is a bird that is big enough to carry me. Don Minnie thought about this for a while and then he said, you are a very small boy, and because of that, I think a swan could carry you quite easily. Call up a swan, little Billy said. Suddenly, there was a new authority in his voice. But I hope you're not going to do anything dangerous, Don Minnie cried. Listen carefully, little Billy said, because you must tell the swan exactly what he has to do. With me on his back, he must fly down to the gruncher. The gruncher will smell me and know that I'm very close, but he won't see me through all the steam and the smoke. He'll go mad trying to get at me. The swan will tantalise him by flying back and forth right in front of him. Is that possible? Quite possible, Don Minnie said, except that you might easily fall off. You've had no flying practice at all. Now mm, hang on somehow, little Billy said. Then the swan, keeping very low, will fly off through the forest with the ravenous gruncher hot foot in pursuit. The swan will keep just ahead of the gruncher all the time, driving him crazy with my smell. And in the end, the swan will fly straight over the big deep lake and the gruncher, now travelling at terrific speed, will follow right behind, and presto, he's in the lake. My boy, Don Minnie cried, you are a genius. Will you do it? Call up the swan, little Billy ordered. Don Minnie turned to one of the robins, which had just come back from a practice flight with a child minpin on its back. Little Billy heard him talking to the robin in a kind of curious twitter. He couldn't understand a word of it, but the robin nodded its head and flew off. 
There you go. That's fast for the next page, I think. Okay, we'll learn that bit there. But there will be more videos to come.